Hey guys, this is Claudia here from the Bookkeeping Experts. Uh, we're close to Christmas. What does that mean for bookkeepers and accountant and business owners? It is time to get everything done for filing your taxes next year. Um, so we're gonna go through a few tips that may help you uh, expedite the process of uh, categorizing and uh, getting everything ready for the end of the year. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing screen right now. There it is, okay. So one thing that I wanted to show you, uh, for business owners, this is, this is the view you may have, okay. Um, in order to get here, uh, so you, you have the left-hand side menu, you click on bookkeeping, and, and here is the bank transactions, okay? So it looks a little different, but pretty much everything is the same. Um, I'm gonna show you a few, a few tips. Now keep in mind that for this book, um, it's, it's just a simple, simple company. Most transactions are already matching, right? So you have the expenses that were entered, uh, so th these transactions, you're just going to match anything that has a match. If you have entered an expense in QuickBooks Online, if you have entered a bill and a bill payment, uh, if you have entered, um, if you have an integration with an app that sends you, uh, bill payments or bills or, or income transactions, uh, you want to make sure that you match and not add, because if you, if you add, you may be duplicating all your expenses and all your income so that you have recorded previously. Uh, the matching means that you have two transactions, one that is probably coming from an app or it could be that you're manually entering in QuickBooks. And the other one is a transaction that is coming from the bank feed. So the bank is sending all this information according to whatever happened in your, your banking account or a credit card. So when, uh, when those transactions are coming through um, the app or from the bank, th there's two separate transactions. But if it's sent to your bank, for instance, and everything matches like the amount and so on and so forth, it's going to create this match transaction. You can open up, make sure that this is correct. And if this is correct, you can even click on the blue, which is a deposit. And if everything seems to be good, you can go ahead and just click on confirm. So this is matching, it's, it's merging the two transactions together, right? And this is what we want to avoid duplication. Now, if you have not entered the information, um, then what it means is that um, you, can, you, you can categorize this transaction. Now, if it is an income transaction, you want to make sure that if there is sales tax, and the sales tax is added. Okay, just give me one moment. <clears throat> it's Christmas time, and I love to sing. So with that being said, my voice is it's not very good by now. <laughs> okay, so if you see me caroling around your neighborhood, you know why my voice is not doing very good today. But anyhow... <clears throat> For those transactions that you don't have an app or is just coming through the bank feed, you will need to categorize. So if it is an income transaction, you want to make sure that um, if there is sales tax or anything like that, you want to enter a sales, a sales receipt for the, that transaction. If it is an expense, there's, there's no transactions previously entered, you want to make sure that you categorize them. So there's a few tips that's going to help you. Okay. One of the tips that is going to help you is to use the search by description. Uh, so, for instance, let's suppose that I'm, I'm looking for all transactions from a rental. So I can type over here and all the transactions from a rental is going to show up. If I click on the box on the top, it's going to select the three transactions. And I want to update it because it's not categorized right now. If it is categorized, it is wrong because it's just QuickBooks using uh, artificial intelligence and 99% of the time is not correct. So 
you're gonna update this information we're gonna put the name of the vendor I can't emphasize emphasize enough the need to always enter your vendors so in case you need in the future you'll be able to easily find right so a rental I'm gonna put here rent or lease you can use your tags if you have tags and in customer you're not going to select it unless you want to associate this expense to a specific customer this is just rent so you do not enter anything in here okay so with that being said if i click on apply and confirm i'm categorizing three transactions all at the same time isn't that great so if to remove that you can click on the x over here and back to normal okay so um this is a great great tool to help you now another tool i'm going to talk about a couple of tools here um is the the receipt sending receipt into quickbooks and adding the expense through the receipt okay so first thing first you need to set up your forward uh, mail from quickbooks so um, either that or you can just upload from your computer or from Google Drive but if you forward from the email it might be very useful um, so let's suppose that I want to create uh, the landscaping that's the name of the company landscaping guy at qbodocs.com okay so this is the email that I'm gonna use to forward all my receipts so you're gonna click on next so it looks good obviously this is not gonna work because this is a simple account but it should work if it doesn't it's because you, ha you have to create a different email because that email is already in use and then the next thing you need to do is to um, is to send the email from, if somebody sends you an email like a, an invoice or whatever you can actually forward that email to whatever email you created in here okay so then the receipt is gonna be sitting over here and you'll be able to review the receipt to categorize it and enter the expense or if everything is already categ or categorized correctly you're just gonna enter the expense or enter the um, and then with that being said you want to make sure that you choose the right account and when you enter from here you first enter from here you will match that expense that you enter in the bank transactions keep in mind that when you're entering the receipts you're creating an expense and we're creating that second transaction that we're we were talking about so if you don't match it you you'll be duplicating everything how do you know that is duplicating i'm sorry that is duplicated <clears throat> okay if you call, click on go bank register is one way for you to go to the bank register all transactions will be located in there uh to find transactions that are that have not been matched it's actually quite simple you can click on the funnel see the little funnel over here you can click on the funnel okay and then where it says reconcile status I'm gonna click and say no status and apply so those are transactions that have not been matched they were manually entered so uh, what you got to do sometimes to fix them you can let's suppose the 24th I can verify if, it's, if there is a duplicated transaction um, I can remove the no status and I you know note I want to know the amount and the date and I'm gonna put up all oh, I lost that one okay let's put this one on August 2nd for $300 okay okay August 8th um, I'm gonna put the date as August 8th on both boxes okay this way I am going to narrow down the transactions that I'm looking for and like I said I'm looking for transactions that have not been matched 
instead of no steps, I'm going to put all this time and I'm going to apply. There's only this transaction. So sometimes what you got to do is just put, just spread the date a little more. And what you should find, it's a one tra two transactions for the same amount, one with the green flag and one with without the green flag. And to fix the duplicated transaction, I'm just going to show how it works, okay? So I'm going to get a transaction here. Okay, this one doesn't have the green flags because this is just a simple account, so it's hard, kind of hard for you to see it. Um, so if I had a duplicated account, I'm, I'm just going to pretend here. So I'm just going to put click on payment. I'm going to look by amount. Okay, let's suppose that those two amounts here are duplicated, okay? So what I would do is just the one with the two green flags... I would click on the transaction, I would edit it. So the green flags would be, let me close this, right where, right over here. See where my the little hand is? So it would be two little green squares or, or rectangle, what it is. So what that means is that those transactions came straight from your bank feed. So, and, so basically cleared your bank. Right, so it's very important for you to differentiate. Here, everything is not checked because it's all coming manually. These are all transactions that are manually entered. All right, so we're supposing that this one has the two flags. I would click on the 19 and click on add it. We'll bring the transaction and here should have like a bank match. I would click on the bank match and unmatch. When I am in, the next thing is delete this transaction now when there is a bank match here on the top is blue it, what i'm doing is actually bringing the transactions from banking back uh, from review to for review means that i still need to look it up right so let's go back to bookkeeping um and i Basically, what would happen is that I would see this transaction back here that needs to be reviewed. All right. Okay. All right. And then once I once I enter here, you you will see that there will be a match then, because if there was two transactions for the same uh, for the same amount, same date for the same all duplicated, you will see that there will be a match just like this one for instance this one has more than one match there's an expense there's a bill payment i know that the expense is right because i'm looking at the date i know that it's for pen save whatever it is <laughs> that, that name and i would confirm that okay uh so that's how pretty much works and once i match that i'm basically merging the two bill two different transactions into one eliminating the duplication the reason why uh, we have those transactions, two different transactions, is because one of them will have more details. One of them is either coming from the app or from the receipt, like I showed you how, um, which is going to have all the, you know, all the details, sales tax, and everything. So, and that's what you want because in the end, you want to be able to look at your reports and see you know, the income, the expense, and everything breaking down on that transaction. What is sales tax, which actually goes to the balance sheet, and what is um, what is the product sale, what is shipping cost, and things like that. So all this comes from, you know, if you have Square, it's going to come from Square. If you have uh, PayPal, it's going to come from PayPal. Whatever app integration you have coming from Amazon, yeah, you have it from Amazon, Etsy, and so on and so forth. <laughs> all right. Okay, so this is it for today. Uh, we'll probably cover a little bit more on receipts next week. So if you feel like, oh, I didn't cover a lot and you didn't quite see all the details, stay tuned. Subscribe to our channel. Share with your friends. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. And write down in the comments if you'd like us to cover something in particular. We would love to help you. 
get ready for tax season that is coming up. But not only that, what I really want to help you with is to be able to understand your finances and be able to be proactive in your business and take your business to the next level. That is the point. <laughs> that is the most important point. So if you like this video, then give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.